This week we've had some huge news, from a new Linux gaming handheld to yet another bump in the desktop Linux market share. Let's go over all of it today. That's right, it's Linux gaming news time. I seem to be wounded, but I can keep going. All right, first up, uh, let's talk about this. Now you might recall the announcement of Playtron from a few weeks back. You know, this hideous Lunchable of a handheld. Well, alongside the announcement of Playtron, they also announced an operating system, Playtron OS. It's based on Linux, and it will be made available to laptops and PCs, TVs, XR, and in cars. Now, admittedly, these claims are uh, very large and seemingly unsubstantiated, and they're making my tech bro sense tingle. However, they also did mention that there was going to be a Playtron handheld PC coming soon, because what they showed us was kind of just a mock-up. Well, this week, we now have seen the first of the Playtron handhelds. This chud. It's called the Sui Play OX1, or if you know anything about programming, the OX at the beginning just means that this is a hexadecimal encoded number. So that OX1 is literally just one. So this should be called the Sui Play 1. It looks like the Wu-Tang controller. I mean, everything about this design bothers me. Like, these thumbsticks are deeply unsettling. The face buttons seem like they are both entirely too stiff and way too sensitive. Like those little rubber poppers we played with as kids. Oh my. And these shoulder buttons. I mean, they look nearly impossible to use comfortably. Emergency. User dead imminent. And this D-pad? It's giving me the gibbers. Tertiary. So yeah, while it looks like a polished turd, uh, it's the other details that have me convinced this thing is an actual pile of sh First, it's being touted as Web3. And like, naively, I thought that we were kind of over the Web3 grift, but apparently not. Look, if it's crypto, it's a scam as far as I'm concerned. And given the fact that Playtron already has my spidey senses tingling, and the fact that their first device has native SUI blockchain integration, I have half a mind to write off the whole endeavor as a scam. But I'd like to know what you think. Like for real, does this device that announced its blockchain integration before its actual hardware specifications get you all frothed up? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, before we move on, I just wanna ask you a question. Are you enjoying this video? Do you believe in the work that I'm doing here? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. Uh, you can also subscribe if that's more your speed. And if you're tired of YouTube's algorithm dictating what video you watch next, you can check out my streaming site, subscribe to.me. I would not be able to have my own streaming site if it weren't for my patrons uh, and my coffee members. So if you uh, want to support this show, you can use the links below to support this show. It's all greatly appreciated and thanks. All right, next up, Lutris. Lutris is now shipping with an exciting new feature. It's called UMU or UMU. However you're supposed to say it, it's apparently supposed to stand for Universal no. Linux Wine Game Launcher. I'm not sure how you get from A to B with that one, but I digress. My razzing the name aside, UMU is actually a pretty exciting project that decouples Proton from Steam and allows alternative launchers like Heroic Games Launcher, Bottles, and Lutris to properly run games outside of the Steam environment with Proton. Now, according to the project's official GitHub, quote, it's essentially a copy of the Steam Linux runtime slash Steam runtime tools that Valve uses for Proton, with some modifications made so that it can be used outside of Steam. As of Lutris version 0.5.17, UMU is the only way to utilize Proton now, though do note that it is marked as experimental and may come with some bugs. This update also brings with it some other updates and fixes, including a simplified GPU selector, and they've also added some new runners. All in all, great work from Lutris, and I can't wait to see uh, what they come up with next. So remember last week how we talked about the Citra Fork Lemonade? Well, this week there seems to be another Citra Fork, and they've made their way to Flathub already. Lime 3DS, which is, I think, a better name than Lemonade, honestly, just saw a new release, version 2107, and it has a few interesting upgrades. First, the Android version saw major stability improvements for Vulkan, as well as some button overlay options. We also now have SPIRV optimizations enabled, which allows for smaller compiled Vulkan shaders and fixes for some system defaults. 
The devs are also looking for help debugging their emulator on ARM-based Macs, so if you have debugging experience and an M-series Mac handy, head over to their GitHub with the link below and volunteer. I'm sure it would be much appreciated. Uh, I wanted to call out this shirt that I'm wearing. This is one of my custom designs that you can pick up over at GardnerBryant.com. It's the Steam Deck logo, if you can't tell, and it's in the Xbox, uh, the original Xbox Jewel. There's also a few other uh, retro game console inspired uh, deck logo shirts over here. We have the uh, original PlayStation. We have a Sega Genesis. We have the GameCube. Uh, another Xbox, original Xbox inspired one because the original Xbox might be my favorite console and many, many others. Uh, if you want to check out those shirts, you can head over to GardnerBryant.com. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, next up, let's talk about Linux market share because this is a big deal. Linux market share has hit another all time high. So what is it, 10%, 15, 20%? No, it's it's 4.05%. Now these numbers are made uh, available by StatCounter and they're essentially gathering info from web traffic across over 1.5 million sites globally. This is a fairly reliable number. Uh, I know a lot of folks are gonna hear 4% and the Microsoft memes are gonna kick in. Like, oh, 4% is nothing. I'll be over here using my real operating system. How much do you think this advanced operating environment is worth? 500? A thousand? Even more? No, it's just- The loss of your privacy and eternal subjugation to our walled garden. It's, it's important to remember these uh, three crucial points though. Number one, this is desktop Linux usage. This number doesn't even include Chrome OS, which is itself uh, a Linux distribution. And if it did include Chrome OS users, this number would be 6.32%. Number two, Linux runs the entire world. I mean, everything, virtually every web server, more than 80% of smartphones and practically all infrastructure runs on Linux not to mention those aforementioned Chromebooks. And number three, this 4%, well, just last year, that number was only 2.9%. Gaming on Linux has a handy little graph that plots Linux growth since 2009, and it shows the recent explosion in growth. It's important to recognize just how striking this upward trend is and how it shows no sign of slowing down. My conclusion with all of this is that it's only a matter of time until your desktop is using Linux too. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And we're in that fight you stage right now. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, maybe check out one of these other ones here. This one is my second channel where I'm doing a D&D campaign with my family. And this one over here is the video that YouTube thinks you're gonna enjoy the most. So go ahead and click on that.